Halloween is finally here, the most wonderful time of year. I have something very special to share with you. Tonight is inspired by the 1923 Bogey Book. So these things are like unicorns. Like, you don't just find these at thrift stores and antique shops. You really have to be lucky to find one of these because so little were made back in the day. They were Halloween suggestion books. They were kind of like Martha Stewart magazine back in the day. So these books were packed with suggestions for decorating, food, party games, costumes, and not to mention the art in these is incredible. Here it says suggestions for Halloween, 10 cents. And when I open to the first page, it says $2.50. And I gotta tell you that I paid $250 just to share this with you tonight. So I'm really excited to just jump in. So I just wanna show you a few pages that I really like it. What's this? It's a note. Hear our plea to the power of three. Thrice the terror will come to thee. Must be the trick-or-treaters. Trick-or-treat? <laughs> Smell our feet. Lend us your ear for an eerie treat. Please, just take the candy. I don't want any trouble. Oh, no. We're the Dadly Dames. Scarlers of the night. <laughs> Here to sing you a spell. <laughs> okay. Yes, it's Halloween. We're here to sing a keen. Summon from the underworld to make ourselves be seen. Oh, Halloween, Halloween. Yes, it's Halloween. You summoned us to cause a scene, cause now it's Halloween. Don't do that, and please keep it down. My neighbors already hate me. Cough up the candy. Right, I actually just made some popcorn balls, and I think they're pretty... Peculiar. Very peculiar. Popcorn balls are a treat as old as time, but my version really plays on my personal nostalgia, Halloween cereals. Now, that is my secret ingredient, and it really just takes me back to when I was a kid and I used to watch Halloween commercials of cereals and such. So the first thing that I'm gonna start with is buttering the bowl. The buttering the bowl helps the caramel not stick. You really don't want that. Now, every popcorn ball has popcorn and I use white popcorn. All right, and that's about nine cups of popped popcorn. Next, I add my favorite ingredients, Halloween cereals. You really do want to pick out all the marshmallows though because we're gonna be putting these in the oven and the marshmallows melt and it gets kind of messy. So I add about two cups and just set it aside. The next thing that I'm going to do is make a caramel sauce. Now don't get scared, a lot of people shy away from making their own caramel but I promise this is super easy because all the ingredients that we put in help it from not messing up. So I'll tell you why and how. But first, we're gonna start with half a cup of brown sugar and a quarter cup of, or, sorry, a quarter teaspoon of salt. Don't put a quarter cup because that's too much. Uh, you wanna put a third cup of water and a tablespoon of butter. Along with that, some lemon juice. Make sure you get all the seeds out. Also with the popcorn, you wanna make sure that any unpopped kernels are not in there because 
that'll break somebody's teeth. And that is surely a trick, not a treat. The lemon juice helps the caramel not crystallize. Another thing that will help is corn syrup. Just for good measure, we put both in. Make sure that this is a success every time. All right. Lastly, I'm gonna put some vanilla. So I'm gonna turn the heat up to high and immediately put the lid on. It's going to steam so that the sugar does not crystallize on the side of the pan. Once your sugar starts to boil, uh, you wanna remove the lid. The caramel is gonna to start to bubble and thicken. So you really do want an instant read thermometer or a candy thermometer. The temperature that we're going for is 245 degrees. We're just about there. I'm gonna turn the heat off. Then I'm gonna immediately add in the baking soda. When I add that in, it's gonna react, kind of like a volcano, because we have the lemon juice in there and it fluffs up really nicely. Then just pour it right over the popcorn and just stir it in to coat the popcorn. This smells so good, it smells like a Halloween carnival. Gather the popcorn into a ball. Pack this really tight so it doesn't fall apart in the oven. Set them on a parchment lined baking sheet. Put these in the oven for 30 minutes so they get nice and crispy. Our popcorn balls have baked and cooled and now they're ready to eat or to wrap up like little gifts in cellophane. I like to do this to really elevate the look. So just give them to people that you know and love and trust. And for me, Mm-hmm. It's nice and crunchy. And you could taste the cereal, which is, is great. But yeah, it's like a carnival in my mouth. <laughs> Food for a Halloween party was very simple. Easy ham and cheese finger sandwiches, a nice potato salad, and stuffed green olives. Ugh. Of course, no Hallow's Eve spread was complete without apple cider. And my personal favorite, donuts. So after I wrap a styrofoam cone in parchment paper, I attach it with toothpicks. Next, I impale some ready-made donuts and drown them in a simple royal icing. I shake off the excess, place them on parchment paper, and sprinkle them with sprinkles. Once dry, I attach them to a cone with toothpicks, making sure to alternate the colors. Alternating the colors gives them a nice spiral effect. It kind of reminds me of a party hat. This is the perfect food and decoration. is near feed on the fear eat flappy bats pass on the cats halloween's here the sky is clear moon shining bright guiding your sight pumpkins are gleaming children are screaming all through the night oh what a fright Everything in the bogey book was either made out of crepe paper or crepe paper streamers, since Denison was a manufacturer of these materials. Here you will see that there's a huge hall decorated just with crepe paper streamers. They have them hanging from the ceilings, in the windows, on the stage, and 
They're just, it's, it's the same material, but it's done in all kinds of different forms. We usually lay it out flat, twist it, hang it up, and call it a day. But to me, it's kind of reminiscent of a child's birthday party. And I want my decorations to be up for a whole season. And I don't want to wake up and it feel like, oh, I forgot to take down the party decorations. So, what I like to do is make garlands out of it. And this garland is called festooning. And basically, the way I do it is by laying down six layers of crepe paper. Then I add paper clips every few inches to keep the stack together. I run it through a sewing machine and make little cuts along the sides, making sure not to cut the thread. To weaken the paper fibers, I lightly crumple it up. I run it through my fingers various times. Once it's fluffed, you get a perfect festoon. I twisted two colors together to get a thicker one. These festive festoons are great to add to walls, place on mantles, and even line shelves. I was lucky enough to find some original Denison crepe paper streamers. When I found these, I died and went to heaven because they're not even open yet. I love how weathered they look, but I'm a very curious guy. And um, I pushed it up to see if the center was also weathered, but to my surprise, everything looks quite vibrant. Like if I stepped back into the time period. Lanterns and chandelier decorations were a big hit. For my next project, I took inspiration from this classic scary cat. I roll out some orange crepe paper and place three pieces of cardboard on top. I turn them over and glue. My goal is to cover them and create one long trifold board. Next, I glue on the scaredy cats, which were one of their most popular designs. I digitize these from an old photo of an original. Since they don't make them anymore, you can download these on my site. Once dry, I glue the sides together and add crepe paper tassels. I attach thin ribbon to hang it up. Looks perfect. Over time, Halloween has been referred to as many names from the Celtic roots of Samhain to Halloween as we know it today. So during Samhain, they would light these big bonfires to ward off evil and welcome the good spirits. And today, we still light those same flames, but they're inside of jack-o'-lanterns. These big orange fruits are the number one symbol of Halloween. Before the custom came to America, the Irish and Scottish would carve root vegetables, like beets, turnips, potatoes, and radishes. In the book, there's something called a Jack Horner pie. Now, a Jack Horner pie isn't an actual pie. It is basically like a pinata for the middle of the table, and a ribbon was running down to each of the table settings so everybody knew what ribbon to pull. When people pulled those ribbons, 
they would claim their prize. There are so many different designs that this book gives you, but the book doesn't give you exactly how to do it, so it's all guesswork. So I created an easy one for me and for you to follow at home. I start by stretching the crepe paper. I measure 18 inches and glue the ends together. Gather one end and wrap it closed with wire. Turn it inside out. We're essentially creating a big bag. Next, I take bags of candy and favors and tape ribbons on the bottom. I add them back into the bag, cut little slits on the bottom, and fish the ribbons through. I like to stuff it with additional light treats, like bags of pretzels. Close the top up with some wire and add a crepe paper face. I made a hat to cover the wire. And we have a perfect Jack Horner pie for the middle of the table. The table settings in the book are usually all paper. And like I said with the streamer decorations, I want them to last a little longer. So I actually dyed this thrifted tablecloth and I stenciled on this bogey book motif, which I found in the bogey book. They have paper decorations that you can order, and one of them is a crepe paper border that has a super cool design. So I took this design, I put it in my computer, and I turned it into a stencil, which I stenciled around the border of this and around the border of some curtains that I have back there that I made out of crepe paper. So it all feels like it's straight from the book, but it's actually DIY. Another thing that I added to my tablescape are these paper plates. These are modern paper plates that have a vintage design, and you can get these today on Amazon. Better be trick-or-treaters this time. We're back! <laughs> yeah, without matches, I hope. Did we give you a fright? Tis the season. <laughs> we heard through the pages that you throw a pretty good shindig. Pages? You summoned us, so we demand a treat. Or you'll get a nasty treat. Oh, no, no, not again. Please, how about this? A treat for a treat. I'll let you join in on the festivities if you bogey me up a costume as good as yours. Deal. Costumes are half the fun at a Halloween party. They were made of, you guessed it, crepe paper. Women's costumes were intricately made, while men's costumes were easily made to slip over their business attire. They could either be glued or sewn and finished with a festive hat. Wow! You look batty. You promised festivities? Yes. Halloween was a night for fun, games, and fortune telling. Candles were lined up and each given a characteristic. A bachelorette would then blow at the candles. The candles that went out were said to be the characteristics of her betrothed. Every great Halloween party had a fortune cake, where the hosts would stick charms in a cake and decorate it. Everyone was given a piece at random. The guest to get a ring will marry within a year. A button means disappointment in love. A thimble means spinsterhood. A key means an early journey. And a penny means wealth. Eating under difficulties was interesting. Two people with their hands tied behind their backs would try to eat an entire apple. The first to finish would have good luck for the coming year. Oh, no. Well, we ought to be back before midnight.
night. Wait, wait. Can you please just sing me one more spell before you go? You don't have to ask us twice. <laughs> Ready, girls? <laughs> Spirits rise on Halloween night, filling your night to the brim with fright, causing trouble on the double. Oh, what an eerie sight. Oh, black and orange everywhere, creepy shadows out to scare. Which is flying, mystifying, cackling through the autumn air. Hallow's Eve was quite a scare. Wow. You know, one thing that I learned is that ghosts are fun, but they don't eat any of the food that you spent all day making. So I guess the trick's on me. Happy Halloween. I hope you enjoyed tonight's festivities. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. The more you view, the more peculiarities will ensue. Happy Halloween. Here's a flip through of the book. <laughs>